Welcome to the tracker installation and training guide for the hardware setup of your T-Series cameras. In this session, we're going to go over opening your Vicon box and what's going to be in it, look at how to mount your T-Series cameras, then we're going to take a look at the front and the back of the GigaNet and discuss all the ports, then we're going to discuss how to connect the T-Series cameras up via your GigaNet. So when you first get your T-Series system, these are some of the components you might get inside your box. What we're really going to focus on in this section is actually mounting the cameras around your capture volume. So we'll help you identify some of the, the key pieces and then um, just work on the, on the mounting. So the first thing you might find in one of your boxes is going to be your, your wand. We'll just move that up to the side. Next, you're going to have your GigaNet box. And we'll talk about how we're actually going to connect the cameras to this box and how this will connect to your computer later. You have your T-Series cable for connecting the camera. Again, we'll talk about this in a bit. Then mainly we're going to be left with the camera and the mounting components. Over here we're going to have our tripod. We're not really going to talk about this too much in depth because this is fairly an easy process. We're really going to talk about how to mount the cameras onto a speed rail. So the first thing that I'll do before I even go about putting together the, the, the clamp and the three-way head is I'm going to open up my T-Series box. I'm going to take the camera out. What you want to do is flip it over so that you can see this button on the side and then take off the lens cap like so and then leave it back in the box. I'll go ahead and push down on this button and make sure that my strobe is now flush with the lens. I'm going to go ahead and hold on to these boxes too. Any of the boxes that are white, for example the GigaNet or the wand, I'm going to go ahead and hold on to just in case we need to ship it back. It's just a nice convenient and safe way to actually ship it back to us um, without having to find other packaging. I'm going to leave this off to the side now too. I'm going to leave my camera off to the side as well. So over here we now have three, three main components. We're going to have our three-way head that the camera is actually going to mount to. We're going to have a stud that actually attaches to this super clamp which then will attach again to our three-way head. I've got these already open off to the side so I'm just going to grab those. When we first get our three-way head, it's going to come in two pieces. It's going to come with one of the labors uh, not connected, or our clamp, and our stud. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and screw in this lever right here. I'm going to make sure that all of them are tight as well, because the other levers might actually be loosened as well. So I'll tighten all of those. I'm going to go ahead and remove this um, adapter. The way that I'll do this is I'll press down on this black button here and then move this lever away from the actual clamp. Then you can see that it pops out. In order to actually get it back in, um, you can see that there's actually a lip on, this, on the front uh, of this adapter. I'm going to slide that in first and then just let it click down. And you can see that this lever will click in automatically. So again, just to remove it, press down on that button remove that lever. Leave that here for a second. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to assemble our actual um, super clamp. So if we actually look down the barrel uh, of that clamp we can see that this screw here is protruding through that hole so we're just going to loosen that up so that's not in there anymore. And then we're going to go ahead and press down on this silver button over here on the, on the side. Once we press down on that it opens up that slot and we can actually put this bolt in there. What we're going to want to do is make sure that this bolt goes in with the, the fat side um, sticking out. So we want to resist the urge to actually screw it in here because the shearing forces will be too large. So we're going to go ahead and just slot that in like so. We're then going to go ahead and tighten this screw back up just so that this bolt does not move within that slot. Like so. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the three-way head and we're actually going to screw it on uh, to the super clamp. So if this uh, lever over here was not tightened, it would actually just be rotating around its base instead of being uh, tightened onto the super clamp. If we had a tripod, we'd go ahead and screw this three-way head onto the top of the tripod. And that's why I'm not going to show you that, um, mainly, mainly because it's quite an easy process. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's on as tight as possible. And I'm going to leave this off to the side because we're not going to worry about this until we actually need to mount the camera. 
As for the adapter that actually goes on the camera, if we turn it upside down, you can see that the word lens is written in two different directions. It's going to be pointing in this direction and in this direction. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the width of this adapter and make sure that it corresponds to the width of the camera. So now I've got the word lens pointing in this direction and that corresponds to the direction my lens is also pointing in. I'm going to go ahead and just screw that on. Like so. Now your camera is ready to be mounted. After attaching my three-way head to my super clamp, I'm now ready to mount it on the speed rail. What I'm first going to do is I'm going to open up the clamp so I can actually fit around my speed rail. And then I'm going to go ahead and tighten it back up as much as possible. You want to make sure that it does not slip and rotate about the rail. Next what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust the angle of this uh, three-way head just so you can see how I actually go about putting it into the, the three-way head. So keeping in mind that I've got this lip <clears throat> on the camera, I'm going to go ahead and put that down, that, that side down first, and then I'm going to just let it click into place, just like so. In order to make sure that it's actually locked into place, I'm going to go ahead and press, press down on that lever, and um, we'll just leave this for now until we come to uh, aiming and focusing the camera. Let's talk about the GigaNet and the front of it and the back with all the ports. Starting with the front, you can see that there is a Bicon logo light, and this one indicates the status of the device during startup. When you first turn on the system, the icon will glow a dim blue and then pulsate at brief intervals, and then glow a steady bright blue when the GigaNet has finished booting up. To the right of this icon is a standby switch, and when you press the soft switch, the GigaNet will go into a standby mode. When you press this button again, the GigaNet will go through its boot up sequence with that light until the cameras are booted up again. Now let's take a look at the back of the GigaNet. First we have our power supply connectors. The power connector for the GigaNet is on the far right of the box. To the left, there are two fans, which help regulate the internal temperature of the device. To the left of the fans is the master power switch for the box. This will turn your GigaNet on and off. Now we have our Vicon camera connections. There are 10 ports on the top left of the back of the GigaNet. Each port is an 8-pin LIMO for connecting the cameras. There is an LED light which indicates the power to the port. When the LED is on, then the port is receiving power. Now we have our synchronization connectors. The powered sync output includes four 3-pin LIMO sockets. This allows for synchronization and power for devices such as Bosler video cameras. The non-powered sync outputs are RCA phono sockets. They are used for synchronizing external devices using GPO signals. The remote start and stop functions can be activated either by plugging in a standard TTL gate to ground signal or by using a simple mechanical switch, normally opened, wired across the pen and the ground to the RCA plug. You may or not have a connection, this connection on your GigaNet. This space houses the analog ADC card connector. This is a 100-way socket for analog signals. The 100 pin cable used for this port is exclusive to Vicon, meant only to connect to a 64 BNC ADUI box or a, the supplied patch panel. People use it to collect different types of signals such as EMG, 
force plates, acceleration, just to name a few. Now we have our link ports. These four ports are 10 pin RJ45 sockets. The gray link cable that was sent with your GigaNet, for an example. You use these when you have over 10 Vicon cameras and you have multiple GigaNets. You can connect the GigaNets together using these ports and the 10 pin link cable that was sent with the GigaNet. Lastly, there are five gigabit ethernet ports. These ports allow connection between the host PC and the GigaNet. For more details, please refer to the T-Series Go Further manual. This is how you connect your T-Series cameras up using a GigaNet. First thing you're going to want to do is connect your GigaNet to your computer. To do so, you're going to take an Ethernet cable, Cat5e, go from the Gigabit Ethernet port to the configured network card on your computer. Then you're going to want to connect all of your T-Series cameras up using the LIMO cable that was sent with your cameras. Make sure that the red dot on the cable matches the red line on the port. The ends are interchangeable. On the camera, it's going to go in the middle port. Now, if you have more than 10 cameras, you're going to want to take your, your second GigaNet and use the link cable that was sent with your GigaNet to connect them together. The link cable is different from the Ethernet cable. It has 10 pens. And what you'll want to do is take one end, connect it to your link port on your GigaNet, take the other end and connect it to the link port on your second GigaNet.